In this video, I'll be talking about multiplexer problems. So this type of problem usually gives you a function like this. And the first thing you want to do is make a truth table of the inputs and the output. So in this case, we have A, B, C, D. So you just have to fill this out right here. So A, B, C, D is just going to go from 0 to 15. And to get F, we look at this function. And it's saying that at these IDs is the min term. So we're going to look at 1. It's going to be a 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 12, and 14. And at 3 and 6, they don't care. So for the rest of them, it's just going to be 0. Oops. So the rest of them is going to be 0. Now it's asking you to implement the function using 8 to 1 multiplexers. So what that means is they have your mux has 8 inputs and 1 output. When they say 4 to 1, it means 4 inputs and 1 output. And 2 to 1 means 2 inputs and 1 output. Now we need to figure out how many selectors we have. So the number of selectors is just going to be log of the number of your inputs. So in this case, we have 8 inputs. So we have log of 8 is 3. So we have 3 selectors. In this one, log of 4 is 2. So we have 2 selectors. Log of 2 is 1. So we have 1 selector. So for 5.1, we have 3 selectors. So I'm just going to pick my first three variables to be my selectors, which is A, B, and C. Now I'm just going to fill this out very quickly, going from 0 to 7. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way down. And I'm going to color this purple. Now, the variable that I have left is D, right? So there are two cases for D, either 0 or 1. And I need to I need to fill this part out. I'm going to color this orange. And okay. And so how do we know what these values are? We just have to look at the table that we did earlier. So when a equals 0, b equals 0, c equals 0, d equals 0, our f is 0, okay? So when a, b, c equals 0, 0, 0, d equals 0, I mean d equal 1, then our f equal to 1. And then the next one is this, which is 1, and then don't care. So what I'm doing is I'm just going down this list and filling out this table this way. So it's going to be 0, 1, 1, x, and then 0, 1, x, 1, and then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, 0, 1, 0. So notice how I'm using A, B, C, and D here, but in the solution they give B, C, D. So if you use B, C, D as your selectors, then this one is going to be a equals 0, a equal 1. And then these values would change as well. You have to look up the corresponding f values. So I just find this way easier. So if you want to do it the other way, it's fine too. There are multiple possible solutions. Now after we have this, for each row in the orange box, I'm going to write i0, i1, Keep going down, I7, okay? So now we have to figure out what these are. And these are going to be a function in term of the variable in this orange box. So it's going to be in term of D. So since we only have one variable, it's very easy for us. In this case, it's just the same value as D. So I'm just going to put D. And in this case, it's 1 and the don't care, so it can be treated as 1, so I can just put 1 here. And this one is one, 0, 1 as well, it's the same as D, and this is 1, 
Now this is one zero, so it's the opposite as the value of d, so it's a d naught. Okay, so just go down this list right here and fill it out. Now, once we end up with something like this, which is just one variable, or either zero or one, then we're done. So in this case, we're done. And what we have to do is just put this into our mux. So i0 is d, 1, d, 1, and then d naught, 0, d naught, d naught. And our selectors are a, b, and c. And then what we have out here is a, b, c, d. Okay, so we're done with 5.1. Now for 5.2, it asks you to do the same thing with 4, 4 to 1 mux. So in this case, we have two selectors, right? So I'm going to pick same as before. I'm going to pick the first two variables as my selectors. And there are four cases for this. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And I'm going to color this purple. Now we have C and D left, right? So we have A, B, we have C, D left. So there are four cases for C, D, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. Now how do we fill this out? This is my orange region. So to fill this out, we have to look at the table like before. And 0, 0, 0, 0, F is 0. This one, F is 1. So again, I'm going down this list and going to fill it this way. So 0, 1, 1x. One and then 0, 1, x1. One. One, zero, zero, zero. And then 1, zero, one zero. So again, for each row in this orange box, I'm going to write I0, I1, I2, I3, and I have to figure out what they are. And this is going to be in terms of C and D, since my orange box has two values, two variables. So because this has two variables, it's a little bit harder to get what the function is. So here we only have to look at the value of D. Now we have to look at the value of C and D. So to get this, we just we can make a K map and that's gonna be a lot easier. So now let's look at I0 right now. So let's look at this one. Okay, so for I0, my K map is So CD00 is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 1, and this is x. So here I can draw this circle right here and this circle right here. Okay, and we're familiar with this from midterm 1. So what is this? This is the same as C or D. Okay, so we're done with this. Now, for each one of these, we just have to make a K-map. So for I1, we make the same K-map. I1 is 0, 1, x1. So we can make this circle right here. We only need one circle to cover all the ones. So in this case, it's just D. Okay. And then we make another K-map for I2. So it's 1, 0, 0, 0. So we can make one circle. And this is C naught, D naught. And last one, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this one we can have one circle 
and this is D naught. Okay, we know how to get this from K map from the first midterm. Okay, now like what I said earlier, when we have something like one variable like this, then we're done. So we're done with this, we're done with this. But then for these one, we have C and D in it. So we have to keep going. Okay, so now let's look at I0. Okay, let's look at this one right now. Um, how do we implement this? Again, we have a 4 to 1 mux, right? So we have two selectors. Now I'm going to select the first two variables that I have, so C and D, and I just have to fill it out like before. So from 0 to 3. And I'm going to color this purple. Okay. Now, we don't have any variable left, so we don't have an orange box right here. When we have something like this, we can simply use the same value at what we have. So here we're just going to have, I'm going to name it J. So J0 is just going to be 0. We just have to follow what we have right here. So 1 and 1. And X means is either 0 or 1. Okay, so because this is either 0 or 1 or 1 variable, we're done. Okay, we're done with these. Now let's look at this one. Let's look at this I2 right now. So same thing, I'm going to pick C and D as my selector and fill it out. And I'm going to color it purple. Okay, so because we have two selectors and we don't have any variable left, we just have to follow what we have right here. So it's just going to be 1, 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to call it K. And K0 is just going to follow what we have up here, which is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is either 0 or 1, so we're done. We're done with this, we're done with this. We're also done with this one, we're done with this one. So, so now how do we draw the diagram? So what I do is I start with the lowest level. So in this case, I'm going to draw this one first. So it's going to be, oops. Oh. Okay. So this one, the selectors are C and D. Okay. And in here we have J0, J1, J2, J3. Okay, and J0 is 0. So we do this. J1 is 1, 1, 0, or 1. Okay, so this one is our I, I0. This one has one output. Now let's look at this one right here. Same thing. We have we have selectors as C and D, and then we have K zero to K three. So K zero is one. And then these ones are zero. Okay. And then we have this big mux right here. This one is also a four to one mux. And the selectors are A and B. And then we have I zero 
I1, this is I, I2, I3. So this mux right here is our I0, okay? So we collect, we connect this to I0, and I1 is a D, so we just have to write D, and this mux right here is I2. So the output of this is going to connect to I2, and I3 is the D naught. Now, after this, then we have an output which is just f of a, b, c, d. Okay. So this is our final answer.